and welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Sun. This is part one of the lesson on critical regions uh, and in this video I'm going to be going through an example of a one-tailed test critical regions question using the binomial distribution. Okay, so here we have our example. A, a manufacturer of a, a rival dog food claims that only four in every ten dogs prefer their Wooftastic brand of dog food. Uh, so four in every ten. Uh, the manufacturer of Wooftastic disputes this claim and believes that a larger proportion of dogs prefer their brand. A larger proportion. Uh, to test the rival manufacturer's claim, a random sample of 25 dogs is taken to see how many prefer Wooftastic dog food. Using a 5% level of significance, find the critical region uh, in which there would be sufficient evidence to suggest that the rival manufacturer's claim is incorrect. Now, there's a couple of things that are a little bit different here. Um, we've been told that the sample of dogs uh, is 25, but we haven't been told how many in that sample have said they prefer the Wooftastic brand. Because this time, rather than being given the result of the sample and asked, was that significant, we're being told, OK, here's the significance level. How many of those 25 dogs would have to prefer the Wooftastic brand for us to reject our null hypothesis? Uh, so we've got to do a bit of investigation here with different values. So um, the same situation is going to start off, though. We're going to uh, write out our null hypothesis, um, which is that the probability is 0 0.4. I've got that from 4 in 10. Uh, and our null hypothesis um, is that uh, the larger proportion prefer it so that our probability is greater than 0 0.4. Um, and the um, dot binomial distribution we're going to use to test this, um, we're going to get let x follow the binomial distribution 25, 0 0.4. Uh, and we would be rejecting our null hypothesis if the probability of more than a certain number is less than our significance level of 5%. So we would be saying that we would reject H0 if the probability of X being greater than um, or equal to a value of X that we're going to work out in a minute um, is less than or equal to 0 0.05. Now, at this stage, uh, it's good to get an idea of our expectation if this probability is true. So our expectation would be that 0 0.4 times by 25, our expectation is that 10 of the 25 dogs would prefer Wooftastic if the 0 0.4 probability is true. So to be a probability of greater than 0 0.4, there must be more than um, 10 of those dogs saying they like it. Uh, so what I've done is uh, I've used the list function on my calculator uh, to calculate uh, a number of results, which I'm just going to jot up here. Okay. Uh, I found the probability of being greater than or equal to oh, 13, 14, 15. The probability of being greater than or equal to 13 uh, is 0 0.1538. The probability of being greater than or equal to 14 is uh, 0 0.0779. The probability of being greater than or equal to 15 uh, is 0 0.0344. Now, this value here is the first value that is less than our significance level of 5%. So what that means is, if in my sample of 25 dogs, 15 or more of them preferred the Wooftastic brand, the probability of that happening is low enough that it's less than my significance level, and I could reject my null hypothesis, because that number of dogs preferring it is unlikely enough that it causes me to doubt this um, initial probability. So my critical region for suggesting 
that the probability is greater than 0.4 uh, is going to be x is greater than or equal to 15. And this is perhaps a more realistic way that hypothesis tests might be used because you would define your significance level, define your sample size and then consider, okay, out of my sample, how many positive results do I have to get that the chance is low enough that I reject my null hypothesis. And what we've shown here is that if the probability was 0.4, the chance of 15 or more dogs preferring wolf tastic is only just over 3%, nearly 3.5% which is less than our significant level, so unlikely enough that we throw into doubt the probability of 0.4. Um, and that's how critical regions work for a one-tailed test. Uh, join me in the next video where I'll talk about how critical regions can be applied to two-tailed tests. I'll see you then.